Hey guys, I got uh, Mia Davies here, and she's coming to us from sunny San Diego. How you doing out there, Mia? I'm doing great, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having Mia, me on. Mia's a social media queen. She's been doing social media marketing a long time, runs a mastermind. Uh, is very smart, uh, very intelligent when it comes to anything online, when it comes to marketing. Uh, she's also a little entrepreneur angel. So she's got a whisper in her back of her ear that keeps her going the right direction. So yeah, go ahead and share a little bit with the people about some of the cool stuff you've done along entrepreneurship. Understand like when you first got started as an entrepreneur, you know, who gave you the right to go out and like start helping other people? Yeah, it was interesting how I got into entrepreneurship actually because I am trained up and have my degree in speech therapy and nowhere in speech therapy do they teach business or entrepreneurship. Um, and so when I graduated with my master's degree and everybody was going on to get jobs, I did independent contract work, but right away I was living in a rural area at the time and there was a lot of need for speech therapists and there weren't any speech therapists. I couldn't do all the jobs that were there. So what I saw was just the, the opportunity to fill a need. So I started doing um, a contracting speech therapy business accidentally, basically saying, I'll get the contract, I'll find you a speech therapist and put the speech therapist uh, there to work because I just couldn't do all of it. And so that started a business and I didn't even realize it. And then I actually just had a desire to learn entrepreneurship and I got myself into a coaching program at 23 years old, my first entrepreneurial um, training because I learned none of that in school. And so for the next year, I started to learn about entrepreneurship and it just kind of took off from there. So you, you, a couple of golden nuggets there you shared is first of all, um, you knew what you're talking about, right? From the speech survey side of things, you're good at it and you're able to market that. So you got so many people that there was an over, overview, over fluctuate of, of leads that are coming in. So you had more leads that you could handle. And then you're able to basically essentially sell those leads off or essentially put other people in the business who are, um, you know, speech therapists that were out there. Is that about right? Yeah. Well, the bottom line is <clears throat> I was able to see where the need was and it was a natural progression to try to fill the need. And, and I just believe that's the basis of all that we do as entrepreneurs is what's the problem? How do we solve it? Where do we meet the need? Where's the need and how can we fill that need? Right. Um, and so that's kind of what led me to the next step and, and then ending up on the internet and having an online coaching business. Again, there's, there's a demand and there's a need out there. And then we have these awesome skill sets that we can help fill the need. Right. And it's just the mindset and the understanding of, wow, I could really do something to solve this problem. Right. And then there's incredible, um, income and financial freedom available inside of that. So, mm -hmm. so when you got a chance to do that as an entrepreneur, um, you know, you started out as an entrepreneur, you left right out of college and went into your own speech therapy practice or, you know, what was the transition for doing that? Yeah. Well, again, it was like, I wasn't trained in it. Uh, you know, I was trained up. My education was such that, okay, you graduated now go work for somebody. I don't, I never even understood why I never wanted to do that. I was never the, you know, employee mindset. I was always a subcontractor, always a 1099. Then I would subcontract other therapists out. And I, I mean, I can look back to my, my history to, to conclude why I, uh, might have had that mindset just because of what I went through yeah. as a kid. But that. What did you have to go through as a kid around money that gave you that mindset that other people probably maybe didn't get exposed to? <clears throat> yeah, well, there's a lot to all of our stories, but I'll just sum it up by saying this, that um, when I was 17 years old, my mom sat me down and she said, I have some really bad news. Your stepdad has been secretly gambling away all the money. She said, I'm $400,000 in debt. And, um, your college fund's gone, your sister's college fund is gone. And I was a year away from, you know, or I was just about to move into the whole, let's go to college. And I just thought I had that covered and whatever. So to hear this news, the biggest thing for me was that college fund was the only thing my dad, my biological father had left to me before he took his own life when I was four years old. Wow. And now my stepdad had gambled it away. And I was really, really mad that day. Like this, I was just, I was just angry. And what I, what I said to myself, I made a decision that day 
that I think impacted the rest of my journey. Um, and that decision was, I'm not going to count on anybody ever again. And actually, interestingly, that day, I really, I really closed my heart off to trusting God um, and to counting on anybody. I was going to be a little Miss Independent. I was going to figure it out myself and I was going to take care of myself, you know? So I did find a way to go to college um, and I worked my way. I worked my butt off and I was very, very uh, um, intentional about the degree I got. I wanted to make sure there was a high demand for whatever I was going to do, you know, because I wasn't going to spend four years in college paying for it or six years because I went on for my master's and not have something I could use. Um, but I think those experiences from the past really had me <clears throat> make a decision that I was going to, I was going to find a way. So my brain was always looking for that way, right? Like to take care of myself and not ever have to count on anybody ever again. So it was a negative thing, but I ended up, it ended up being used for good in some very interesting way uh, because I was able to have success, but it wasn't until three years ago that I came back to my faith and uh, God has totally changed my heart. And now I let people in and I don't do it myself and I trust God. But what's beautiful about what I went through and the journey I had is that it did, it did um, drive me to make things happen, I guess, you know, to find a way. Absolutely. So in, in doing that, you, you sat there at the table at the age of 17. And once you found out that stuff from your, from your mom and from your, you know, what had transpired, you know, how did you go about, you know, making the money you needed to do? Cause you went to college, correct? For speech therapy, right? You, you, you got out, you had to do something at that point. What did you do to help overcome that? Well, from when I was 17? Yeah. Well, I just, I knew, I knew that I knew that I knew that I had to go to college. Like it wasn't even an option that I was going to sit and feel sorry for myself and, you know, not go. It was like, I have to find a way. And actually I ended up, and it's just miraculous to me because I hated high school. I was like, I was just, you know, I could just kind of like pass things, but I just even, I just had no interest in like learning and all this stuff. And, uh, but somehow I still got a scholarship that paid my undergraduate. I worked hard for that. I got additional scholarships. I literally went around to the hospitals and said, look, I decided on my degree. I knew right away I was going to do speech therapy. I was like, do you guys have any kind of um, scholarships? So I was applying and, and getting these scholarships from different hospitals and all kinds of cool stuff that I never, I don't know how I even thought of it, but I was just determined. Then I also worked all through undergraduate just to pay for my living expenses. Um, and then I got into, you have to have a master's to be a speech therapist. So I got into graduate school um, and just knew that that's what I had to do. Now, when I came out, there's a high demand for speech therapy. I always tell people, like, if you want to choose a, a career in that realm, like PT, OT, SLP, they're always in high demand. So there were plenty of jobs. But for me, I just didn't want to work like a nine to five. I wanted to be independent. I wanted freedom. I, so I just did the contractor route. Um, but again, I got into that entrepreneurial program and from there, I mean, doors just started opening. I got into network marketing like many people do. Um, and then I used the internet to grow my network marketing business. And then I had people asking me, how did you use video to start recruiting? Cause I became the top female recruiter in my network marketing company, but I was using YouTube to do it. So people were like, how are you doing that? And I was like, well, I'll teach you. So I launched my first digital product online, teaching other people how to do what I just done. And little did I know that that started my online whole business. And it's just, I've never looked back since then. So. He's a hustler, baby. <laughs> guess so. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations, by the way. I mean, that's amazing in itself to, to you could have sat there and just bit a poor pity party side of things, but you had this drive that just got you up and you're like, all right, just dust it off, you know? Okay, you got no money, it doesn't matter, right? You just went after it and you got it done. Where'd you get that drive from? I just think I made a decision that day, like to never count on anyone again. And like I said, it was, it was like a negative decision, but it ended up being used for some good. But um, one of the things that I, I share in my story too is that years later, and I don't recommend this for anyone, like like when I shut my heart down, like I'm not going to count on anybody. I don't want to be let down. Right. I don't want someone, I don't, I just don't want to have to count on anyone. So if I count on myself, I'm in control of my life and my environment. And that's like kind of the path I was on. But, um, about 
I don't know, maybe seven years later, something like that. I was at a business event just to get marketing training and, and entrepreneurial training. I, you would never find me in a church. I was pretty much mad at God. I couldn't count on God. I couldn't count on anybody. I'm just going to take care of it. Right. But I met this business event in Chicago and I remember, um, she, the leader of that event had like an optional evening. She called it like spiritual equipping or something. I didn't know what it was. And I'm in Chicago. I was bored in this hotel. I had nothing to do. And I was like, I'll go check it out, whatever. So I wandered down to this optional spiritual equipping thing. And there's worship music playing. And I grew up in the church. Like I knew Jesus when I was young, but I had just closed my heart off. I hadn't opened a Bible in 10 years. You would not find me in a church. But here I am. I walk into this room and uh, she starts to share her testimony of Jesus Christ. And it shook me because it was like, I, it almost felt like God was seeking me out because you wouldn't find me in a church, right? I'm running from him. Like, I don't need you. And here he is at a business event. Like, Hey, I'm here. Right. So that night really shook me. And actually she passed out Bibles. She said, if anyone here doesn't have a Bible, you can take one. And I remember going up to the front of the room and taking this Bible, reading it on my hotel room floor, literally crying that night. And that planted a seed that had me start to seek God again, instead of just, be in my own little world. Um, and that started me on a, on a new path, but it was like, it was interesting because I started going back to church and like kind of started adding some things back in. Cause I knew I was missing faith. I knew that I'm not to count on myself, but that we're only here for a little while. Like, what am I, what am I doing? Just chasing all these things and trying to create this little controlled environment, you know? And so that event shook me. And I remember that was, I want to say seven or eight years ago. And I remember being like, I'm supposed to do that someday. And that didn't make any sense to me, you know, cause I wasn't anywhere near that. And now here I am at this point of sharing, uh, sharing my faith and sharing God's word in the business world. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed, you know? Would have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> Wilder things have happened, right? <laughs> yeah. So talk, talk to us now about how you're, how you're doing that, helping other people shape their businesses. Yeah, well, this was interesting too because I was I was sitting uh, I was building my business. I remember I was sitting going back to church. I was here at the Rock Church in San Diego. Some people know about it, and uh, I was in church and I just kept like hearing the message, "Bring my word to the business world." That's all I got. And I remember kind of arguing with God. I was like, "You have the wrong girl. I still don't trust you. I don't know the Bible. Like, I don't even understand the Bible half the time. Like, I don't know. You're talking to the wrong girl." And literally a week later, I found out about a discipleship school that was a year long, intensive five hours a day studying the Bible. And I didn't want to go at all. I was a busy entrepreneur. I was still working really, really hard, you know, and I didn't have time for that. Like, I can't go to that, but I knew I was supposed to. And so I just, I did in faith, I stepped into that commitment. And it was in the first week of that program that I truly surrendered to to Jesus Christ and, and let him into my heart. And something really interesting happened after that, after all these years of needing to uh, control things and, and uh, take care of myself and never trust anybody. Like I just, my whole heart softened that day. I'll never forget. I cried for like four hours and I was like, all I've ever wanted was to be able to trust God. I was just so afraid that I'd be let down, you know, and that day, like I let him into my heart and what happened was all these things I had been chasing, you know, the money and the, it was never about money for me. It was always about protection and like not needing anybody. Right. And, um, and so all of a sudden I was like, I didn't, my identity wasn't in entrepreneurship. It wasn't in making money. It wasn't in my bank account anymore. And I felt this freedom of like, I don't even need to be in the business world anymore. In fact, I don't really want to be in the business world because everyone's chasing the things that don't matter. And my heart was so filled up with the love of God that I was like, just send me anywhere. Let's go to Africa. I don't care. Like I'll be a missionary. Like I don't need money. I don't need all this stuff. And God was like, do you remember when I said, bring my word to the business world? Yeah. Like I meant that. Right. So what happened was I had this email list of thousands of people. I had a social media following of thousands of people. I had no agenda business wise, right. Other than I want everybody to know Jesus. So I just started to share my testimony and I had a lot of leaders actually approach me and say, you know, I have a testimony too, and he's changed my life and he's my everything. But like, I don't share about it because 
I, you have to like, that takes a lot of courage. Like you're going to get pushed back from people. And I did, I had pushed back from people because they're like, I came to you for marketing. What are you doing telling me about Jesus? You know? But I said, I, and I listened to these leaders and, and they told me you're, you're giving me the courage to say something, to do something, you know? Um, and I said, that's awesome. But the bottom line is, and I say this to this day is like, whatever we're afraid of in, Oh, what if someone doesn't like me or they don't like what I'm sharing, whatever. It's like in the end, those are the things we'll be the most proud of anyway, that it's like, you weren't afraid of losing things in the world. You cared about sharing your authentic message in your heart. And for me, that's my top priority is that people know God, that people know Jesus, those that have gone away from him, come back to him. Those that um, have never known him, that they hear what's possible with him. And then from a business standpoint, I love, love working with, um, with entrepreneurs to get their message out, to create time freedom so that they can do whatever God has put them here to do. And as far as who I work with, the majority of people who want to work with me, like if someone does not ever want to hear about Jesus, they don't want to hear about Jesus. They want nothing to do with him. Typically they, they want nothing to do with me. And that's okay. That is totally okay. So the majority of people that come to me, they either want to grow in their relationship and in, in their faith, um, or they are strong Christians already, but we just go to work on building out their business and getting results online. And it's so fun because it's like, there's so much more to life than just working and being obsessed with this, you know? So the whole journey is like, how do you get a message out there? How do you make a difference? But you're not consumed by it, right? It's like, the way I see it is I'm a child of God. I just happen to be called into the business world. But so me, next year, I'll be the, I'll go there. The looking back on things, where was the, the low point or the landmine that you hit in your life looking back that shifted your mindset so dramatically in this kind of sense? You know, where was that point of like, you know, you, you, you talked about being like almost like soulless, just ch chasing a dollar at that point. Do you, do you remember that time in your life when you were doing that? Yeah, but like when it made the switch, you mean? Yeah. You know what? I Like I told you about that business event that planted a seed. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm missing something here. But I wasn't ready to like fully trust God yet. I went on for years still burning myself out. And actually, it wasn't until I faced physical burnout. So I was going to the doctors. Like I remember I had, they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. But you start hearing things like potential brain, what was it, a brain tumor? I was getting brain scans. There was all this stuff, right? Because I was, I was a mess. I was just worn out. And I remember just like thinking, what am I doing this for? Like, what is this all for? You can't take any of this with you when you go. And it's costing me my health, my everything. So that's what really started having me get serious about getting back to church, seeking God and saying, please give me direction. Cause I'm like, I'm, I'm going to kill myself, just burning myself out. Yeah. So just going to the doctors and everything. It was at that point, you're like, all right, I need to make a change. Yeah, for sure. So if, if you were going to, if you were sitting across the, from yourself, your former self back then, you were going to have a conversation with yourself. What would you say that would help you break through that moment? Like what was going on in your life to get you through to where you're at today? Yeah, I think for me, it was um, all of the, all of the fear and the trying to control my environment and trying to protect myself, you know, it was just exhausting. It was just exhausting. And I feel like I, I would have just had a conversation with myself if I was sitting across from me at that time. Um, to say like, this isn't who you are. Like your identity isn't in, in money and success. It isn't in entrepreneurship. It isn't in any of that. It's, it's like getting back to your, your core faith. And I would tell myself that I, that, that God is faithful, that I could trust God if I could go back then. Right. Cause it's like, that's all I wanted to know was that I could, that I could trust him. And, um, I, I feel like that's the biggest factor that changed it all for me, you know? And now I can do what I do in freedom, not in a have to. I'm, yeah. I'm doing it out of like, God, that's what God's leading me to do. But I'm like, if he led me somewhere else, I'm like, woohoo, let's go. You know, there's like no attachment to it anymore. Sure. Well, what's the best way that somebody can get a hold of Mia and learn more about the business and how you're helping people now at this point? I would say probably the best thing right now would be, especially if you want to do um, business in such a way that faith first and what does that look like and what does it mean to build your business according to what is written in the word of God 
I would say definitely my podcast. So God centered success on iTunes. Um, I have like almost 80 podcasts on there that people can listen to. And then, uh, I also have my fan page where I do live videos and I love interacting with people. So that's Mia Davies fan page.com. Would love to see you over there. That's about it. Does Minnie have a fan page too? No, but Minnie's <laughs> always in all my videos. She's right here with me right now, actually. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I appreciate you coming out today to speak to us. I know you got a busy day. Again, guys, get a hold of me at Davies Online, the angel entrepreneur. Thanks.